I just yeah. have to be pretty. Like, who cares about... Yeah. <laughs> oh, if you're pretty, if you're stunning, you don't even have to go to school. Don't waste the money. <laughs> don't waste it. That's, <laughs> that's some advice to all the kids watching. Don't go to school if you look good. Don't waste your time. Mm. Let them ugly hoes go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Not the ugly hoes. Ah. <laughs> Hello, Wussy, and welcome back to Queering Quarantine. I am your hostess, Ivy Fisher, and I am joined by Atlanta's very own Miss He. <laughs> Miss He, how have you been during quarantine? been spending most of my quarantine in Athens, actually. That's where I'm at currently. Um, moved out of my place in Atlanta. The lease was ending. and um, Also, I, Atlanta doesn't really know how to act when it comes to quarantine. They're, like, opening up the bars again. People are going shopping. You know, it's just, like, too much. I, don't, I got a compromised immune system already, so I just decided I'm going to chill it out here in the small town of Athens. And it's been really nice. I'm, like, staying with my um, best friends. Um, and I can like walk everywhere as a girl that doesn't have a car because gays can't drive. Um, it's really, it's really nice to be able to get around here and like feel like I'm still living even though we're all, you know, locked up. So it's been good. Honestly, I give it a B plus. <laughs> That's good. I'm so glad to hear that you're doing well. You look amazing. Great. Oh my goodness. Great. Your your creativity just inspires me so much. Um, okay. How have you been able to stay creative throughout this time? Well, I think that I've been really enjoying this like wave of digital drag content that's been happening. You know, I think it's so incredible to see the resiliency of like the drag community being able to still do drag um, on the digital platform and still reach people. Um, I've been able to do shows that um, wouldn't be able to do um, previous to uh, quarantine and all this stuff happening just because, you know, I don't have a means of getting to LA or wherever. And so it's really cool to be like hit up by um, performers all over the country, some outside of the country, um, just to, like, you know, do shows and stuff. And so that's really what's, I've been doing is like stay creative. I um, when I try and create the digital content, um, which I feel like you understand as well because your stuff is incredible. Thank but I'm you. trying to create like music videos and full experiences that you're not really able to do when you're doing like a show at a bar. Mm -hmm. You know, you give them the full fantasy. You can edit your stuff to look the best you can, and it's just I don't know. It's it's a really cool uh, new way of interpreting drag. Um, I feel like a full pop star every time I create a new content or new video. Um, and that's been really cool and really rewarding. Um, and I have some really incredible friends who are like down for the mini projects that I come up with. I love the creative freedom that comes with like, you know, like the digital age of drag. You can literally right. edit yourself to how you want. You could do the specific beat. Cause you know, sometimes mm -hmm. we can't hear in the club. Sometimes yeah. the music is too low and the way you right. want to edit it in real life is not going to come out the way you want it to. And there's so much, let me tell you how much I love B-roll because let me not know the words for a certain part in the song. Like, oh girl, let's just focus on like, that this stuff on it. Let's not focus on something else. Give them the full fantasy. Um, so how do you think that, do you think like digital age is going to persist once we're able to come back in the clubs? Or? I don't know. I think I, I honestly hope so. I think that it really has changed how I see drag um, because, you know, I'm not a, you know, a singer really or anything like that. So there's no reason for me to be like, making a music video. Um, and so being able to do it through this, I guess, avenue, I think it's really cool. And I hope that, you know, it stays a constant once things open up, if they ever open up. Mm -hmm. I think that it's, it's been really cool to see um, the creative chops that people have um, and how they interpret songs and, you know, whether it be green screen, whether it be just you in your living room, whether you be on, like, location. Like, it's really cool to see how people interpret drag at this moment. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's been a time like this um, in drag, and so it's, it's, it's exciting um, to say the least. I loved how you said, like, you feel like a pop star. I definitely feel mm -hmm. like this sort of um, 
era that we're in now allows for performers like you, like me, like everybody to sort of like travel the world and like get their content right. to different people. I love that. Um, You just had a birthday yesterday, did you not? I celebrated my 24th birthday. Um, The whole, I went into 23 thinking like it's my Jordan year. I'm about to do this, this, and this. And it was starting to, like, pick up, and I was feeling it, and then Miss Rona happened. And so we just, like, canceled the whole thing. Um, so I'm turn I turned 24, but I think I'm just going to redo 23 again. Um, <laughs> just because I all that I needed out of it. So we're going to try it again. I'm 23 again. Um, but it was also my first uh, birthday celebrating it with um, my new name, which was really surreal to, like, have that moment of being called tia and like feeling good about that mm -hmm. and um i'm blessed enough to like have my parents be on board with it mm -hmm. and you know, address me as tia and use my pronouns and you know obviously they mess up sometimes but i think that the effort really showed yesterday and it's continuing to show and it's just it was really special yesterday my um best friend created this like whole ass scavenger hunt they had me like running around Athens, seeing all my friends in different spots, and it was just a really beautiful day. Um, and then I blacked out at eight p.m. Because <laughs> you know, what's a birthday if you can't remember the last part? Of it? Exactly. Yeah. That is the icing on top of the cake. I, I truly. Think. <laughs> I think that what's happening in drag is certainly a mi microcosm of like what's going on in the real world, especially with like the race relations police oh brutality, God, yeah. everything that's going on right now. I feel like definitely the progression that we've seen just like in the technological and like creative mm -hmm. aspects of drag is highlighted in how we are progressing in society. What I really am appreciating is the how black artists and entertainers are like put, being put on the forefront, um, which I hate that we have to go through so much trauma for us to be recognized finally, but in the same breath, happy to be recognized, happy to have um, our art and our stories be celebrated um, and I think that with with the political um, I guess p the political headspace everyone is in um, I don't know I think it's a really good time to be a black artist um, because you're, you're you really your voice is actually being amplified like I've noticed that like the way in which the way the tips have changed since you know all this stuff is going down the way my reach has changed on social media and i just i you know i hate that we have to have little people dying from our community for this to happen um but in the same breath i think it's well overdue and i've been able to connect and also experience and see other black performers that i probably would have because you know a lot of times uh show directors you know give us the not even a thought yeah it's a real turning point i feel like yeah. um there's been very many instances throughout history where there's been riots and there's been protests but things mm -hmm. haven't progressed in the way that i feel like they are progressing now and especially right. with the advent of social media how we are able to like hold people accountable and like get cops arrested and defund the fucking police and yeah. reach out and do community outreach and get people together even in the midst of a pandemic we mm -hmm. are strong and resilient as fuck i think it's what's also interesting is that like during the pandemic how we were all supposed to be quarantined that years that social distance but like recognizing the the fact that racism and, and and the killing of black people is a its own health risk and it's its own pen epidemic that's been happening for centuries and we've been screaming about it and i'm really I, it's it brings me so much levity knowing that you know we can recognize that this is an important issue even if there is a pandemic we have to be up there we have to be fighting we have to be yelling because we we the moment we stop doing that is the moment that y'all forget and then we get killed again, you know? And so I'm, I'm glad to see people are, non-Black people are literally angry and are putting in the work they should have been putting in all this time. Oh my God. Wow, Miss Ma'am is poetic. <laughs> she said poetic justice. We need justice. 
Well, I just wanted to ask one more question. I think that like we got to everywhere that I wanted to touch on. We talked a little bit about drag. We talked about the current mm -hmm. social situation. Is there anything else mm -hmm. that you wanted to bring up in the interview? Well, two things. One, uh, please wear a mask when you go out. I don't know why we're still having to keep repeating this, um, but like wear a mask because it's scary out there and people are literally dying and it's a literal pandemic happening. Um, so please wear a mask and then also please listen to your black peers. If they're frustrated with you during this time, please understand that like we're all going through trauma, we're all grieving right now. It's really scary um, for girls like us. It's, especially scary because they're still we're still being killed by the threes by the fours by the like every week it's like that nothing has changed on that front and so when we're frustrated if you have a black friend who's like frustrated or kind of slides with a little bit of attitude please just recognize that like it's oftentimes coming from a place of we're just grieving and hurting and and trying to make it through the day i think a lot of times um i personally feel guilty for the way i react to um my non-black friends because you know i know that they don't mean any malice by any actions or anything like that but i think it's also i have to remind myself that right now in this time i sh i'm allowed to be angry i'm allowed to be frustrated and i'm a and i honestly need that release you know and, and i hope that those allies and those people who are saying they're here for us and they're saying all black lives matter recognize that you know I can't be smiling and cheerful all the time, especially during these times, you know? Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.